Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is Pastor Darius Miller, and first lady of the Lord. We say to the church of God, and we're thanking God for his goodness today. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, in Jesus' name, we bless you. We thank you and we praise you. We thank you for one more day. We give you honor and praise. Now bless us as we share your word today, as we worship you together. And let, the, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We would exalt and praise and magnify your name. You are great and you're worthy to be praised. We ask all these blessings with expectation and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll begin by singing, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. He is good. Yes, he is good. 
For he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is good. Yes, he is good. Amen. Yes, he is worthy. And he is good. To God be the glory. The great things he has done. We thank God for each of you who are watching with us this morning. I know my mother-in-law is on. Miss Betty Zeno. Sister Linda Greer is on this morning. Cousin Velma Williams is on. Sister Le Faith is on. Sister Brenda Aaron is on this morning. Sister Dessa Lewis is on. And uh, Angel Williams is on this morning as well. And so we're thankful for Sister Lou Greer is on. I think I said that as well. So we thank God for each one of you who are watching with us right now. And as First Lady always says, the, we welcome the Facebook Church Hopper <laughs> family and the ones that will watch it later. Mm -hmm. Thank you for praying. My voice is getting better. It's still, still going to take a few days, but it is getting much better. So thank you for your prayers. Continue to pray for both of us, and we will always continue to pray for you. Amen. So we thank God for His blessings and His favor today, and allowing us to be alive and well. And we're just grateful. First blessings. This time we're going to do our mission, business statement, and affirmation of faith. Mission statement. Shadydale Church of God is committed to be a guiding light that draws men, women, and children unto God by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and living lives which portray God's will according to his holy word. Vision statements. Community reform. Seeking to reclaim the village in an effort to provide each individual with a biblical foundation. Spiritual rehabilitation, providing a Christian-based program to aid in the, in, the, in the deliverance from substance abuse. Soul winning crusade, witnessing to the unsaved so that they may receive salvation that is free, accept Christ as their Lord and Savior and become heirs to eternal life. Source of refuge, existing as a safe haven for all who need to escape from the ills of the world and experience the peace that surpasses all understanding. An affirmation of faith. We, we believe, believe in Jesus Christ, Christ the Lord, who was promised to the people of Israel, who came in the flesh to dwell among us, who announced the coming of the rule of God, who gathered the disciples and taught them, who died on the cross to free us from sin, who rose from the dead to give us life and hope, who reigns in heaven at the right hand of God, who comes to judge and bring justice to victory. We believe in God as Father, who raised him from the dead, who created and sustains the universe, who actually delivers people in times of need, who desires all men everywhere to be saved. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who is a form of God present in the church, who is the guarantee of our deliverance, who leads us to find God's will in the word, who guides us in discernment, who impels us to act together. And I was looking at the word make to seeking to reclaim the village in an effort to provide each individual with the biblical foundation. And I was focusing on the word effort. Sometimes we give a lot of effort to certain things and some things we don't really give effort to. And so it takes an effort to reclaim something. Sometimes things are hard to get back. You know, when you uh, have a, a you, everyone that has kids, uh, I know even our parents, when we were little, we had something tight in our hand. And it took some effort to reclaim whatever we had in our hand. It was really tight. It took a struggle with some of us to get it out of our hand. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to take an effort to reclaim them. It's going to take an effort for us to get up every morning. It takes, it takes, I know it for some, it takes, a, uh, it takes effort for us to get up in the morning to find what we're going to wear and to um, <clears throat> make sure that we are on time. It takes an effort to get up and go to work sometimes. Mm -hmm. It takes an effort. It, things in life just take effort. But we know that the Word can help us with that effort because He says in um, Philippians 4 and 13 that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So, mm -hmm. When we don't have the effort, all we have to do is just um, repeat that scripture. Mm -hmm. And then that's medicine for our soul. But those of us, and including myself, what about you? Mm -hmm. Including uh, your pastor, um, that it takes the effort for things that we have to do in life. So um, I guess we're going to remember to apply that mm -hmm. to our lives. To God be the glory. Notice also, uh, Marche and Reese are on this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, my first grade teacher is on, Miss Timmons. From good, morning. Carolina. good morning, Miss Timmons. Uh, it's so great that each of you have joined us today. We're so grateful to God for all of His goodness. 
and uh, his favor to allow us to, to be with you online today. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. So we're grateful for each one of you who, with us, who are with us today. Uh, we thank God for Shadedale and your giving and how you have helped sustain the ministry through your giving. Uh, you can give in multiple ways at Shadedale. Of course, you can give by going by the church or putting your offering in the mail slider. We're at 4626 Trongwood Street, Houston, Texas, 77016. You can give also by writing to us at that same address, Shadedale Church of God, 4626 Trongwood Street, Houston, Texas, 77016. You can give online at our website, shadedalechurch.org. Click on the Donate tab. You can give via PayPal or Givelify, or you can give through the Givelify app on your phone. So we thank you for your giving. It's been a blessing enabling us to continue to do ministry uh, in, in this way, and so we're just grateful. Continue to pray for Shady Dale. You know, this is the holiday season, and uh, we want to give um, out some things, and so uh, be prayerful that God will open that door for us. You know, last year we had the, uh, the food, um, food. Houston, food, Houston Food Bank mm -hmm. um, offer a lot, and so uh, but this year that kind of uh, didn't come through this year, but be praying for us that and God will bless us to get that, get something out this year. You know, the Bible says that Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. And we always want to give during this holiday season. There's always someone less fortunate than, than you and I. So we want to be grateful. We want to respond with gratefulness in our giving. So be prayerful for that. That all those things will work out for us this year. And uh, I just want to say thank God for each of you. Your support, your prayers, your you know, watching us each week. Um, if you don't catch us on Sunday morning at 11, you can always find us on our social media pages. Go again to our website, shadedalechurch.org. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll find our social media pages, the YouTube channel, Facebook page. You can watch us there any day of the week, any hour of the day. So I want to thank Shadedale members and our ministry team, Sister Angel Williams, Dessa Lewis, with Calvin Williams, and Brother Nehemiah Newman, who have been ministering to us uh, throughout the pandemic. And so we're just grateful. And we thank you for your love and support. Um, as we continue today, anything else you want to add, first lady? No, that's it. Okay, we're going to sing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Join us on this familiar song. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk. In this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the 
us this morning. Thanking God for his blessings and his favor. And he's been good to us. And we're leaning on his everlasting arms. Thank God, First Lady, and thank God she's feeling better today. And we give God thanks for that. And thank God for all of you again for watching with us and being with us this morning. Turn with me again in your Bible to Isaiah 26. Isaiah chapter 26. We're going to read verses 1. Through four, Isaiah 26, this is one through four. You find it, you can say amen, put a thumbs up. Isaiah 26, one through four, reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, and it reads, In that day this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God will appoint salvation for walls and bulwarks. Open the gates, that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter in. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. The New Testament scripture comes from Romans chapter 12. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Again, from the New King James Version of the Bible, and it reads, Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Our preaching text this morning comes from Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. I thought First Lady was going to quote my verse this morning, but that's alright. Philippians chapter 4. We're going to read verse 4 through 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7 reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This morning I read for you Isaiah 26, verses 1 through 4, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, and Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. May the Lord bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of His eternal word. I want to share with us briefly this morning from the subject. Guarding your mind, guarding your mind in unprecedented times. Our subject is God's peace is available. Guarding your mind in unprecedented times. God's peace is available. Let us pray. Father God, we bless you for your goodness today. We thank you for one more time to share your word. Now, Father, bless me, your servant, as I stand to share your word today. 
Would your anointing rest upon us, Lord God, as we declare this truth to your people. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart may it be acceptable in thy sight. For, oh Lord, you are my strength. <laughs> you are my redeemer. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Our subject this morning is God in your mind in unprecedented times. God's peace is available. As we think about the times in which we've been living, these last, I'll say, 20 months or so, we've been going through unprecedented times. As we define that word, unprecedented means that there's nothing really that happened before that that we can relate to or measure it by. And in our lifetimes and living memory, we've never experienced anything like these times. Times where uh, in the United States, businesses have closed. Grocery stores uh, have closed and have limited hours and schools have been closed and had to learn from home. And even churches have been closed and, and we're worshiping virtually uh, right now because of the, the, the ramifications of the pandemic. And I believe that has led to many people in their minds being a concern, being stressed, feeling vulnerable, vulnerable in their mentality and their thoughts about life, about what can and will happen. Because we are living in these times where we don't know what's going to happen next. And today, I want us to reflect on this theme, guarding your mind in unprecedented times that we will guard our minds to know that we can still trust God in the midst of all the anxieties, the uncertainties, the difficulties of life. Because I don't want you to lose your mind. I remember growing up, my mother would pray from time to time, Lord, keep me in my right mind. <laughs> As a child, you kind of wonder, you know, what, 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 what's mama praying about? But as an adult, I understand more and more that it's important to, to guard your mind. Because, you know, as the old Negro uh, college fund statement used to say, uh, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And we don't want to waste our mind, our thoughts, worrying about the daily lives and things that we live around and have to deal with. May God keep us in our right mind. May he protect us, help us mentally and emotionally as we face these uncertain times. Our Old Testament text of scripture in Isaiah 26 is a beautiful text for us to remember. As we reflect on these times, he can keep us in our right mind. The text says in Isaiah 26, verse 1 through 4, that in that day this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God will appoint salvation for walls and bulwarks. Open the gates that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter in. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. For in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. I want you to trust in God today. I want you to keep your mind stayed on him. Because he'll keep you in perfect peace. And this morning, our subject is God's peace is available. See, in the world right now, we're living in the midst of so much trauma and chaos and uncertainty. But God wants to keep you in perfect peace. Why and how? By keeping your mind stayed on him. Because we put our trust in him. I want you to put your trust in God today. Don't put your trust in the news broadcast. Don't put your trust in your in the paycheck or in your neighborhood or, or in our president or congress or senate. But I want us to put our trust in Yah the Lord. For in the Lord is everlasting strength. We've been going through, through this, this, these uncertain times for about 20 months, almost two years now. But we can trust in God forever. That's something today is guarding your mind in unprecedented times. God's peace is available. And then we read our New Testament text in Romans 12 and 1. Romans 12, verses 1 through 2, 
says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, God still wants us to do his will, even in these uncertain times. It is our service to him, to serve him, regardless of what's going on in the world. So don't be like the world. Don't give up on God. You know, there have been people who said, well, they're going to quit going to church. They're going to stop trusting in God because, you know, everything's in chaos. But I want you to renew your mind on the things of God. Trust him. You can prove that God will do what he said he would do. He will take care of you and I, even in these uncertain times. Our preaching text this morning comes from Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Verses 4 through 7. And this is a text of scripture that really feeds into this theme. Guarding your mind in unprecedented times. We don't want to allow the times to cause us to lose our faith. And God gives us his peace. See, peace is basically defined as the absence of war and conflict. <laughs> and in our world today, if you've been paying attention to the news, you know that there are countries right now who are prepared, uh, going through war and preparing for war and talking about war. But in you and I, and it's the battle many times is not on a battlefield across the world. But the battlefield is the battlefield of our minds. What we're worried about you know, what we're going to eat, or how we're going to live, or how we're going to make it. But I want us today to trust in God because God's peace is available. And God gives us perfect peace. <laughs> the peace that will surpass all human understanding. It'll help us in every season of life. And it'll help us right now with what we're, with what we're dealing with in our society and in our world. There are three things in this text I want us to, to think about as we consider guarding your mind in unprecedented times. God's peace is available. The first thing I want to say from Philippians 4 is rejoice through it all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Rejoice through it all. The text says rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. See, I want us to rejoice through it all. See, the word rejoice talks about uh, praise, gratitude, and thanksgiving. To exalt, to, to lift up the name of God, to glorify God. And in these uncertain times, these unprecedented times, these unfamiliar times, I want us to rejoice through it all. Because as the text says, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. In other words, God is still in control. His plan hasn't broken down. As Jesus said in the scripture, he said, Not one jot or one tittle of his word shall fail till heaven and earth passes away. And since we're still here, <laughs> we should rejoice through it all. See, I want you to know that the enemy is after our mind. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy you and I. And sometimes when we go through trials and tribulations, uh, it's not the tribulation that destroys us, but it's our own mindset that destroys us. And one way to have the peace of God is to thank him anyhow. Amen? I want us to remember that we can thank God no matter what. We can rejoice through it all. I know that sounds weird. It sounds impossible. But I dare you to do it. <laughs> I dare you to, to rejoice. In the midst of your circumstances. Because when you rejoice. It brings in the peace of God. It, bring, it puts your mind. Not on your problems. But it puts your mind. On the God who made us. It's, it's, it's thankfulness. 
is rejoicing through it all. It's gratitude. It is a powerful resource that you and I have. That when things may or may not be going so well, you can still choose to rejoice through it all. And I want us to rejoice today to know that the God that we serve, he is still on his throne. He can still take care of us. He can still make a way out of nowhere. The Psalm of David in Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. <laughs> his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I want you to trust in the Lord today so that we can rejoice through it all. If I read on, it said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. I want us to rejoice today. Rejoice through all of the things that we have to go through. Yes, I know it's been difficult. Yes, I know it's hard. But I want to rejoice today. When you rejoice, God shows up. For he dwells in the praises of his people. And when you and I praise his name, he'll show up and bring us through. Rejoice through it all. The second thing I want to say in this message today, if we consider a theme, guarding your mind in unprecedented times, God's peace is available I want us to remember to pray. Remember to pray. Look at verse 6 in uh, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. I want us to remember to pray, church. As the word of God is said that we preach from that, that text in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from their wicked ways, then will he hear from heaven and forgive our sin and heal our land. I want us to remember to pray today. Because everything you face, if you pray about it, God can give you peace about it. He can help you through it. He can give you the right mindset as you're going through the trials and the tribulations. Prayer changes things and prayer changes people. I want to remember to pray. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Sometimes we go to God and we're, we're already angry. We're already upset. We're already grumbling. We're already uh, throwing in the towel. But I want to remember to pray with thanksgiving. Let God know what you're going through. Let your request be made known to God. Tell God about it. That's what prayer is. Making your request known unto God. I want us to remember to pray today. To call on the name of the Lord. For he is worthy. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our prayers. And he's ready to provide for whatever we need. Psalm 55, verse 16. This, this text touched me as I was reading and studying. Psalm 55, verse 16 says, As for me, <laughs> I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Hallelujah, somebody. Evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many against me. God will hear and afflict them, even he who abides from old. Because they do not change, therefore they do not fear God. I want us to remember to pray, church. Are you going to remember to pray? Are you going to remember to call on God? That when trials and tribulations come your way, that prayer, the power of prayer, will work on your behalf. 
I want us to remember to pray. Yes, guarding your mind in unprecedented times, God's peace is available. It's available when you and I call upon his name. The third thing, the last thing I want to say today is receive God's peace. Receive God's peace. The text says again, Philippians 4, verse 7, it says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. See, this letter to the Philippian church is not just for one person, but for all of us who believe that all of us need his peace. And when God gives us peace, it'll help us in these unprecedented times. Times when chaos and drama and trauma are all around us. I want us to receive God's peace today. Let's not avoid it or fight against it or try to, to fix it ourselves. Because the peace that you and I can bring, it we can't control it. We can't control the things of this world. If you and I could stop this pandemic, we would have stopped it at the very beginning. Help me, Holy Ghost. If we could make things better with our hands and our voices. We would do it. Somebody would have done it by now. But the only thing that can sustain us in times like these is the peace of God. It goes beyond human understanding. And it's here for you and I. The peace of God, which surpasses all human, all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In other words, you need to have Jesus Christ in your life. So you can have this peace that God has to offer. God has made it available for you and I. But we need Jesus Christ in our lives so we can ex accept and have the peace of God. See, the world can't have this peace. But Jesus gave this peace to you and I so we can overcome the trials and the tribulations of the world. The things that are going on around us that we see that we have to deal with. Jesus said in John chapter 16, John chapter 16, verse 31 through 33 says, Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Indeed, the hour is coming and has now come that you will be scattered each to his own and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. See, Jesus wants you and I to have his peace. The peace that the world cannot receive. But he came to give you and I peace. In the world, we're going to have trouble. We've never seen this much trouble in our in living memory. And maybe there are those who are still alive when World War II was going on. That was a traumatic, unprecedented, chaotic time when war was going on all around the world. War was going on around the world. But what we're going through now, we still need to receive the peace of God. Yes, in the world war, man worked out man's level of peace. But God can give us peace that will never end. We don't have to worry about treaties and disarmaments and all those kinds of things, ceasefires. But in Jesus Christ, he came to give us peace that will enable us to overcome the world. I want us to have that peace today by receiving Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. When we have this, this peace of God, it will enable us to overcome the world so we can make it through all the ups and downs and all the trials and tribulations, all the things that we go through. Today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can know him. It's as easy as ABC. To A, admit that you need to repent of your sins. 
to be believed that Jesus died and rose again, that your sins might be forgiven. And see, confess him as your Lord and personal Savior. Today, if you don't know him, you can have him and have this peace. Why don't you pray that prayer with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word today. Lord, I admit that I have sinned against you and I need to be forgiven of my sins. Lord, I believe that Jesus died on the cross that my sins might be forgiven. Lord, I want to confess you now as my Lord and Savior. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Save me and make me a new person. Fill me with your spirit, Lord, that I will live my life for you. I confess you now as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. And I'll live my life for you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you believe that Jesus Christ is now your Lord and Savior, your child of God. You can experience the peace that comes from knowing Jesus Christ. Well, you might say, well, Pastor, I'm already saved, but these times have been so uncertain for me. But I want you to know that God's peace is available for you. It's available for all of us today. I want you to rejoice through it all. Choose to rejoice today. To know that God has everything you need. And he's still on his throne. He's still in control of everything. I want you to remember to pray. Remember to call on the name of the Lord. He's listening for you and I. He's, Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Making intercession for you and I. I want you to receive God's peace today. Let his peace rule in your heart and your mind so you can experience everything and overcome the tribulation of this world. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the reminder that we can guard our mind in these unprecedented times and that your peace is available. Help us, Lord, to remember to rejoice, to not be overcome with sadness and grief and fear, but to remember to rejoice through it all. Help us to remember to pray, to, to call upon your name when the burdens get heavy, Lord. We will call upon your name and know that you are here and you will answer our prayer because we have faith in you. Most of all today, help us to remember to receive the peace of God, to let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. To let our relationship with you give us the peace that we need to overcome the world. Bless your people today. We give them all the praise and thanks. For it's in Jesus' great name we pray. The saving name, the satisfying name, the strong name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I pray you've been blessed by the message today. To know that God's peace is available. You can guard your mind. These unprecedented times. We want to thank you all for joining us, and I'm going to take this message with me and put it in my heart, knowing that I can rejoice at all times, joy, rejoice through it all, and remember, remember pray. to pray, and then also to receive His peace. And so, I got my, I have my my, my weapons this week. Not real ones, but I have my support this week. And I hope you got something that you could take with you into the week. Amen. So um, thank you everyone again for joining us today. Let's the Lord to be dismissed. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God. So we can know the Holy Spirit. May the rest rule and abide within us, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a good week. <laughs>